No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. That's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America. Why is the president doing what he does? What motivates Barack Obama? We have a very intriguing concept from a man named Dinesh D'Souza. He used to be a speechwriter and analyst in the Reagan administration. He's now president of King's College in New York. And his book called The Roots of Obama's Rage is something we're going to talk about right now. It's a top New York Times bestseller. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome back to the 700 Club, Dinesh D'Souza. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to be on the show. Uh, what is it about Obama? What did you discover about Obama and his father? Well, the peculiarity about Obama is that he is expanding the power of the state domestically while he is simultaneously contracting America's power in the world. So he's pulling us out of Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, he is um, going to foreign countries to, to apologize for America's unilateral actions in the world. And then domestically, he's expanding the welfare state. So why is he doing this? Uh, the thing is about Obama is he's the most unknown guy to walk into the White House. So two years later, we don't have a full grip on who he is. So my theory is that Obama's dream, Obama's ideology, comes from his father. Uh, and in fact, the person who uh, clued me into this is Obama himself. If you pick up his autobiography, it's called Dreams from My Father. Uh, not dreams of my father. He's, he's not writing about his father's dreams, but dreams from my father, the dreams that he, Obama, got from his dad. Uh, and of course, his dad was an anti-colonialist. He grew up in Kenya uh, at the time when Kenya was fighting uh, for independence from the British. Uh, this anti-colonialism is an ideology that looks at the West and specifically America as the bad guy, as the oppressor, as the colonizer, as the rogue elephant that's stampeding around the world. And it also looks at American corporations, the banks, the insurance companies, Wall Street, the pharmaceutical companies, uh, the drug companies, the uh, energy companies, as being a neo-colonial economic exploiters within America. Well, so you can understand that by taking his father's ideology, Obama, you can help to understand what Obama's doing in the White House. Well, did he have some kind of a mystical experience where he put his hands into the dust, the red clay of Africa, and identified with his father? Was that, was that what he writes? Uh, yeah, it's a fascinating story because people sometimes say to me, well, Dinesh, Obama's father uh, was absent from much of his life. But nevertheless, Obama writes in his own book that he was obsessed with his father. His mother, Anne Obama, cultivated in him a mythic image of his father as the great man of Africa. But then Obama discovered in his teenage years that his father was not such a great guy. Uh, he was an alcoholic. Uh, he killed a man in an accident. Uh, he was uh, also a polygamist who had multiple wives, eight children. He never looked after any of them. So Obama had a letdown, and then he had to say, okay, let me go to Africa for myself to find out about my dad. And in a climactic scene, Obama goes to his father's grave, and he weeps, he cries, he throws himself on the ground, he touches the earth, he says, through Africa's red soil, I tried to commune uh, with my father, but of course his father had been dead, so he couldn't get his father back. So in a sense, what he said was, okay, I can't get my father, so I'll take my father's dream. I'll take my father's ideology, and where my father failed, I will succeed. I will carry that dream to success. Well, you have this amazing quote in your book. You say, incredibly, the United States is being ruled according to the dreams of a Luo tribesman of the 1950s. This philandering, inebriated African socialist who raged against the world for denying him the realization of his anti-colonial ambitions is now setting the nation's agenda through the reincarnation of his dreams in his son. Here's a perfect example of that. Obama's father in 1965 wrote a very interesting paper in the East Africa Journal yeah. about African socialism. And what he proposed is that to target the rich and the powerful, he said, first of all, you can confiscate their land. You can, you can use the state to appropriate their land. And second, he said, you should tax them. Tax them to what amount? He said to no upper limit, up to 100%. So here's a guy who was okay with 100% tax rates, meaning identify the rich 
rich and take everything they've got. And while this seems a little bit crazy, uh, underneath it is the anti-colonial assumption that if you're rich, you have gotten rich through greed, through selfishness, through exploitation. So it's as if I came to your house and stole your furniture. Well, what's the proper tax rate for me? 100% because it's not my furniture. So I think by looking at Obama's father's paper, which, by the way, Obama knows all about but has never mentioned in any of his own writings, by looking at his father's paper, you can get an idea of what Obama is doing when he targets the rich. He keeps saying the rich don't pay their fair share, even though rich people in this country today, the top 10%, are paying about 70% of all the income taxes. But evidently for Obama, that's not enough. Maybe he, like his father, wants to see a tax rate that goes up to 100%. So uh, Obama's father is a very interesting guide to what the son is doing in the White House. Well, now, Dinesh, uh, let me ask you, did these uh, anti-colonials feel that that Europe grew rich by raping Africa, sucking the lifeblood out of Africa and the other uh, colonial uh, nations? Is, is, is that their premise? Yeah, the thing is, most Americans don't know about anti-colonialism, but it's the dominant political idea in the third world in the second half of the 20th century. I know all about it because I grew up in India, uh, in post-independence India. Anti-colonialism is what my dad, what my grandfather talked about and believed. So in a sense, I understand Barack Obama Sr. very well. This ideology that says the rich countries got rich by looting, by invading and occupying and looting the poor countries. That's the core of the anti-colonial ideology. And the, and the whole idea is that you should use the power of government. A lot of the anti-colonialists became socialists because they wanted to use the power of the government to crush the private sector. Well, it's not just the private sector, though. Obama wants to crush America, what you're saying in your book, is, and, and the European nations as well. Is that correct? Yeah, he has a real prejudice against Europe and specifically the British. One, one of the first things Obama did when he came in the White House is he found a bust of Winston Churchill, a statue. Uh, he took it down. He said, I want to send it back uh, to Britain. Uh, partly the reason for that is that Winston Churchill was the prime minister in the 1950s when there was an anti-colonial uprising in Kenya. Uh, Churchill ordered a brutal crackdown on this uprising. Obama's father was arrested and jailed, and Obama's grandfather was put in a detention camp and allegedly tortured. So when you plug in the anti-colonial uh, model hypothesis, it begins to explain a lot of stuff Obama's doing, not just his policies, but also the little stuff that no other theory can explain. Well, in your book, you, you seem to be relatively favorable toward colonialism. Because is, is that your feeling is that colonialism, despite its flaws, may have helped uh, the third world countries? I, I guess what I would say, Pat, is two cheers for colonialism, not three, because there were, there were uh, harsh regimes um, imposed on Kenya and, of course, on India as well. But if you look at India today, it's growing at a rapid rate. Uh, it has the potential to become a superpower. Now, why is that? Well, first of all, we Indians, we speak English. We have uh, technology. We have universities. Uh, we have property rights. We have uh, contracts and courts. We have democracy. So how did we get all this stuff? Well, well, the fact is, if we were honest, we have to admit we got it from the British. And this isn't just my view. The Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh just went to Oxford University a few months ago, and he said effectively this. He said to the British, thank you for colonialism. It did do a lot of good for India. Let me ask you, if Obama continues unchecked, what is his end goal for the United States of America? Somewhat surprisingly, and I think shockingly and disturbingly, even for some of the people who voted for Obama, I think Obama's goal is to knock America off its pedestal. To him, if America is number one, that licenses us to be a kind of rogue elephant, to stampede around the world, to use resources out of proportion to what we have, to invade other countries. So if you look at what Obama's trying to do, I think what he's trying to do is make America a normal country like Finland or Greece. In other words, to take away our leadership position in the world, and to me, that's a very scary prospect. Well, you pointed out that uh, he has stopped offshore drilling in the United States and yet uh, allowed an export-import loan of several billion dollars to Petrobras. Is that it, to help Brazil's offshore drilling? 
Well, this is very revealing because there are some people, including some conservatives, who just think Obama is another conventional liberal, kind of like Al Gore. But see, Al Gore would say, look, the planet is getting uh, warmer, global warming, so everybody's got to use less carbon. We've got to stop oil drilling over here. We've got to stop oil drilling everywhere. But if you look at Obama's actions, that is not Obama's policy. Obama has a moratorium on oil drilling in America. Uh, so he's blocking it over here, costing a lot of jobs, costing a lot of American business to go abroad, uh, and yet uh, the Export-Import Bank, with the Obama administration's uh, rubber stamp of approval, uh, gave a $2 billion loan guarantee to the state-owned Brazilian uh, company, Petrobras, to drill in Brazil. This is not for the oil to come to America. It's for the oil to stay in Brazil, and the Brazilians are evidently, apparently, selling some of it to China. So Obama, in a sense, the anti-colonial view explains it. it. It basically says Obama wants the colonizers, us, to have less so the formerly colonized countries, the developing countries, can have more. Has anyone else seen this same thesis that you have employed in this book? I think the thesis is original with me. Well, actually, it's not original with me. Its real author is Obama itself. <laughs> if you read his book, Dreams from My Father, the word colonialism appears many, many times, and it's clearly a major theme with Obama, a much more important theme, by the way, than civil rights. Obama never sat at a segregated lunch counter. In fact, none of his descendants are slaves. His father was a black immigrant from Africa who went to Harvard, and his mom is white. So his real history is his history in Canada. Kenya, it's an anti-colonial history. I'm, in a sense, the second guy after Obama to spot it. I think part of the problem is that in America, we tend to project American history onto Obama, and we ignore Obama's own history. Dinesh, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the book is called The Roots of Obama's Rage by Dinesh D'Souza. It's getting to be a bestseller. Uh no, 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 not God bless America, God damn America, that's in the Bible for killing innocent people, God damn America.